July 9, 2006, Italy won the World Cup for the fourth time in its history, an evening that put an end to 24 years running without winning a single trophy. An incredible team, strong men in every line, and an exceptional leader. How did the Azzurri build its success? Tremors on the French side, bursts of joy on the Italian side. The 2006 World Cup final between Italy and France is still very much in the memory. A little payback for that famous Euro 2000 final. 2000, in fact, the year in which our history began. For this tournament, Italy has some of the best players in the world. Although the Azzurri made it to the final, they saw victory slip through their fingers. Sylvain Wiltord's injury time winner and David Trezeguet's golden ball ended Italy's dream. It was a bitter pill to swallow for coach Dino Zoff. He was ousted and replaced by Giovanni Trapattoni. The least we can say is that his record was not much better. Under his leadership, Italy went out in the last 16 of the 2002 World Cup against South Korea. Some refereeing decisions would particularly cause scandal. Two years later, it was a repeat performance, a pitiful elimination in the first round of Euro 2004 which was to be the last straw for the former AC Milan player. To take over from him, one man. His name, Marcello Lippi. The Italian coach is the man who has helped Juventus return to the top of the Serie A and Europe. As soon as he arrived, Lippi restored confidence in a team that was in the throes of doubt. The leader decided to build on the existing backbone by adding new players. The defensive quartet of Zambrotta, Cannavaro, Matarazzi, and Grosso provided defensive solidity, unrivaled positional science, and sharp tackling. In front of them, Gattuso and Pirlo. The former reassures with his physical presence and his ability to sweep up the pitch. His midfield partner, on the other hand, steers the game, breaks down lines, and projects himself forward quickly. The forward line itself underwent several changes. While Toti, Inzaghi, and Del Piro are still present, Tony, Gilardino, and Yaquinta bolstered the team's attacking capabilities. In short, the effect was immediate. Marcello Lippi made Italy formidable and feared by all, as the Nazionale finished first in their qualifying group. On the eve of the 2006 World Cup, Italy appears to be a serious outsider. Once again, the Calciopoli scandal, the notorious match-fixing affair that came to light in June 2006, could have shaken their status. If this could have disrupted the Squadra Azura's preparations for the competition, the players would ultimately draw on it as an additional source of motivation. First in their group with seven points, Italy then beat Australia, not without difficulty, then easily overcame Ukraine. The semi-final against Germany served as a springboard to the final victory. The two teams were evenly matched throughout the game. The match went to extra time, a perfect moment to bring out the lights. Fabio Grosso scored the first goal of the match in the 119th minute. Del Piero then sealed the victory for his side. The joy was immense for a team that had finally regained its greatness. Lippi's Italy were pragmatic, but terribly effective. They were a pragmatic side, but they were also extremely effective, with a defense that had been practically unbeatable throughout the tournament. July 9, 2006, here we are at last. Five minutes after kickoff, the Blues got a penalty, and Zidane's legendary Panenka flew past Jean-Luigi Buffon. But the French joy was short-lived. Marco Matarazzi equalized 12 minutes later. Then, nothing. The two teams were evenly matched and failed to convert their chances. Overtime, 110th minute. As the penalty shootout approached, Zidane was sent off. The Frenchman headbutts Matarazzi, the last thing Zizou does on the pitch. Still 0-0, the 11-meter lottery will determine the fate of the World Cup. Trezeguet misses for France. La Nazionale leads. Fabio Grosso is the fifth and final marksman designated by Marcello Lippi. The left back converts his shot on goal. The left back converts his shot into the net, giving Italy their fourth star after the successes of 1934, 1938, and 1982. The award recognizes the hard work of Marcello Lippi, who has instilled a winning culture into this group. Above all, it rewards a golden generation that has been around since the end of the 1990s. First of all, Jean-Luigi Buffon. The last line of defense was one of the great architects of this supreme victory, keeping out 93% of the opposition's attempts. Secondly, Fabio Cannavaro simply had a masterful World Cup. Il Nuovo Muro di Berlino made his placement science. His decisive interventions as well as his charisma speak for themselves. In the same year, the Italian was on top of the world by winning the Best Defender Award and the Ballon d'Or. Let's not forget to mention Andrea Pirlo. The midfielder was simply amazing with his technique, his sharpness, and his vision. Francesco Totti was also one of the key elements of this award. The brilliant striker proved to be important both in terms of his passing and his positioning. Alessandro Del Piro, for his part, established himself as the tournament progressed. He played a handful of minutes in the group stages, but gradually became a decisive factor. Let's face it, this team has simply surprised the ball watchers and delighted the football fans. Bravissimo, quite simply. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like it, share, and subscribe. It helps us a lot to continue to create more content on football news. See you soon for a new video. Ciao!